yourself down into the burn further. People turn to the Los Angeles Times in times of crisis. You know, there's nothing like a huge story to generate excitement in a newsroom, and it gets people out into the field and focused on what we do best, which is telling stories. People all over the world are at the edge of their seats about what's happening here right now. The fire was burning on both sides of the road, and it was burning on the ridge, and the wind was whipping around and I'm photographing them and they could be burning. The fire coverage was a perfect example of how print and online work together. You couldn't get better information on what was going on with the fires anywhere else, period. Started early in the morning on a uh, Sunday and by the time I got into work, there already were half a dozen reporters out on, out on the field. And then as the day went on, we just added more and more people. And having them Blackberry, having them email, having them phone in information about what was happening at that moment. I arrived at 10 o'clock at night last night. Um, I haven't been to sleep. By the second day, we had more than a dozen fires burning in three different counties. By the end of the second day, we had more than 60 people out on the various fire lines, and it just grew as the week went along. We got a spot up on the hill above us. And I look up, and the fire has just surrounded these 12 firefighters. I kept shooting, but in my heart of hearts, I was praying for those men. Please save those guys. Please help those firefighters to survive. They sent the air unit, they dropped the water, and these guys, they start coming out of there, one by one. Hose lines up here, everybody's out of the shelter, what's accounted for, no interest. Out of everything I've shot through my whole career, that was an actual miracle that I was allowed to witness. Shelter deployment. Shelter on the ridge line. Copy that. So we had the Metro staff of the Los Angeles Times filing into this blog for the website. We had the photography staff filing, treating, treating photos like breaking news. So they were sending us photos continuously and we were just sending those onto the site. And that's something that goes to the strengths of the LA Times. We can provide that kind of mass, that kind of intense coverage so that we can tell readers not only about one local fire, but about an entire firestorm that's engulfing a huge chunk of Southern California. We knew that people were instinctively coming to us to find out what was going on, and they were coming back again and again and again. They were checking the blog, they were checking the maps, they were looking at the photos, they were uploading their own photos, some of them were uploading video. And then in the morning paper, we could sum it up for them. We could tell them where it was headed. We could analyze the major issues. We could talk about what had gone wrong, what had gone right. And we could tell them great stories about people who we had encountered in the course of uh, reporting on the disaster. Not only did we build a database so people could help find each other, we built another database so people could find out which homes were damaged and where. So we could tell that we were actually hooking people and they were coming back to us because they found the content useful. When we were uh, faced with nearly 15 wildfires this last fall, 2007, working directly with marketing and advertising. We launched our own fire relief campaign and put ads in the paper and KTLA. And within nine days, we raised, with the McCormick Tribune Foundation match, more than a million dollars. The advertising community recognized that there was a crisis in Southern California, and they looked to the Los Angeles Times as an outreach vehicle. The 34 years that I've been here, uh, we've always managed to get the edition out. The fires that happened uh, back in October, uh, it caused a ground fall to the Orange County facility. We lost power at that plant one night. Still got the paper out the door. Everybody pulled together. Just like every other morning, we still need to get the newspaper through to our readers. 
how we did it. It's not enough that they write the story, we have to do our part and get it out there. I think when the fires were over, we all felt a tremendous sense of accomplishment. We knew that we had done something that was really good. We had done the best possible work that we could do. We had had a huge response from our readers, both online and in print. And we felt that we had provided a service to the community in which we live. And that was a great feeling. You had these outrageous, awesome photos of firefighters trying to save homes and in backyards and swimming pools and by themselves and it, it was just, our coverage was just phenomenal. It was a perfect example of how do we use the resources of this massive institution to provide a service to the community at large. We can bridge the gaps between communities in Southern California. We can take people places they've never been, even though sometimes those places are right around the corner. We can introduce them to people they've never met, even though some of those people are their neighbors. And we can do it with a level of expertise and a depth of professionalism that they can't get anywhere else.